Disease, and welcome to a new episode of Caps and Commentaries Podcast. We're here to whip you into shape. And this is uh, our long-awaited G.I. Joe the movie commentary that we have just talked and talked and talked and talked. And then we think we talked it enough, we keep talking it again. So we're finally doing it after all this time. Not that people went banging down our damn doors to listen to it. But, uh, you know, we, we are finally doing the G.I. Joe movie. It was something that I, I grew up on and it watched... Um, I say a whole hell of a lot is putting it lightly. And uh, Nathan, you know what? We're doing something different here. If you don't, if you're listening to this for the first time, then just go back and listen to the old episodes. You ought to know who we are by now. So I'm just doing it differently. I'm taking over here. I, so uh, that, uh, that's that's perfectly fine. Yeah. Um, kind of before we <laughs> before we jump into the actual commentary, just to kind of like give a little. It's always fun to hear people's like thoughts. You know their first introduction to you know the things that you know we cover like between me and Nathan or or when I or I've heard over here uh, uh, people's thoughts and things that I enjoy if I listen to other people's podcasts like their first impressions and stuff like that and uh, did you rent this did you uh, watch it on the USA uh, Cartoon Express did you watch it in syndication someplace or both, both. actually actually all of it uh, first time was renting it Frank's video. Uh, I it, it was around Christmas time. Uh, I can pull up the the photo on my phone actually, but I remember watching it because I had rented this a few times over. But I don't know why uh, I was watching the movie and I was sort of like acting out some stuff. And uh, I took even Emily thought this was weird because I was telling her this last night, and I you can see it in the picture. For some reason, I took my face. Like uh, on the the side of our couch where the seat was, it, it I don't know how to explain it. Like it, it sticks up a little bit. Like it's got some I don't want to say stitching around it, but just some excess around the seat for its like design. Mm -hmm. I like took my face, like I was being like beat up, and I like ran it across there so it like opened up my on the bridge of my nose is just like a like a burn mark, and I'll mm -hmm. I'll find the, the the photo. Hopefully. It's a lot easier to find than it was last night. Might not be. Yay, dead air. Damn it. Well, it's in I here somewhere. Give an explanation as to why you did it while you're looking for it. So, well, yeah, it was just like I, I'm pretending like I'm getting beat up. Gotcha. By the Cobras. Okay. So I'm yeah. just like, oh, slowly. Oh, he's got by the head. He's like, oh, and I'm like, ah. I get it. I get it. Trying to sell it for your own personal amusement. Trying to trying to help sell the the intense battles that. But but I actually on. like hurt myself. All right. So here I found the picture. Here we are. Uh, this is at my grandparents' house. This is Christmas time. They actually got me the Sky Havoc. And I don't know how well this is going to be able to see. All right. Come on. Come on. There we go. Yeah, kinda, I see the I see the yeah. mark on your nose and yep. Scott. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yep. That, I, that, that's me uh, kicking my own ass, pretending that I'm getting beat up by uh, the Cobras. That's so. devotion to character. Were you uh, pretending to be any particular Joe? Or no. Just like, no, I, I, I was. I was like myself, but I was part of the Joes. Yeah. So there we go. Awesome. Nice. Uh, no. Well. Um, yeah. Uh, for me, it was. Uh, I, I would sit at the video stores, and because there wasn't. Um, too many familiar characters on the box. Like I, I knew Lady J, but ha Duke was wearing a jacket, which could throw me off. And the Sergeant Slaughter's on there too, but I didn't really um put Sergeant Slaughter. To, I mean, I, I knew of him, but I, I guess just because there's just something about. Of course, it's, it, I don't know why I thought that, but I just felt like. Uh, and looking on the back, if you look at the, on the original VHS, um. Uh, cover art in the back of the box it's like a, a gallery of the various characters that are featured in this one and i didn't recognize a lot of them that's that's what that's what it was and i just felt like i i didn't know if i'd be able to follow it because cobra i didn't see cobra commander on there and various other characters that i was familiar with so i was like i don't know if i'm going to be able to get into this so i would just watch gi joe on tv and um when uh uh, the cart, uh, USA Cartoon Express would play G.I. Joe syndication. It would mix it up with the Sunbow uh, slash Marvel production series and the Deke series. And then in that mix, they would play the movie with the Sergeant Slaughter bumpers um, with him introducing the episode 
and closing out the episode and say this episode we're going to get those cobras and stuff like that so that was and it was it, it it was kind of exciting to watch it that way because it was played one part at a time for four over four days. So me and my brother would have to wait, you know, it would, and I remember every time I watched this, I remember specifically where the episode would end and it said to be continued. I'm like, ah, oh, shit, we got to wait till tomorrow. And, and it was always like that. So me and my, me and my brother really, really loved the GI Joe movie. And um, for a while, really bought into the uh, origin of Cobra commander because I, um, only had some of the comics as a kid, and um, so I bought that for a while. Is like that's how Cobra Commander came to be. I have since like yes, that's not, nor is it, you know, a a logical origin for Cobra Commander. But because I love this movie so much, I forgive it and just accept it for what it is within the, the confines of the series. But I even when I watch episodes like the Fun House or Cobra's Creatures or the Viper. Um, I still think a Cobra Commander is a human and not someone from Cobra Law, but I like the movie so much that I, I just don't think too much about it because it's got a, a memorable cast of new characters and you see all the original characters and uh, it's um, and every anytime you see anybody like from Cobra Law, like Galapagos and Mrs. Enforcer, Pythona pop up, I mean, I think for the most part, G.I. Joe fans, I mean, can't help but take notice. Like, I know some fans felt you know, at this point, G.I. Joe had really gotten out of control in terms of, like, it's not so grounded anymore. Like, it's gotten really, uh, like, the fantasy elements are really coming, especially 87. I think that's probably, um, which, oddly enough, is my favorite year of G.I. Joe. But I felt like with this movie and the, the roster of heroes and villains that came out in 87, they're throwing in a lot of, uh, uh, it's it's not necessarily just straight up, like, military based uh characters but i i don't i feel like um i don't know i i loved everything about gi joe i can't say that this was a bad wave or a bad roster of characters i I think they were all all great all the all cobra all the joes i didn't really care for much for the um like the tiger force and uh slaughters um uh, marauders like all the like the the the, when they would bring back characters and just repaint and stuff i was like "Ah, i just don't really but, you know, there were so many characters that I think you and I missed out on because of our age. Like, I didn't get to have a Flint or a Cobra Commander or a Storm Shadow or a Zartan because they're putting out new characters every year. If we get lucky and, like, they put out a new Destro or something like that or a new Cobra Commander, which I eventually would end up getting one of those. But um, I, I just thought every, every, every line, even to the very end uh, through Battle Corps, um, I thought it was uh, pretty good. But um, I, I love this movie. I love the characters it introduces. We got great voice talents with Miami Vice's own Don Johnson and and uh, Burgess Meredith and uh, Sergeant Slaughter himself. So it's... Uh, it's, it's <laughs> I, I, I like that. It's like Don Johnson, Burgess Meredith, Sergeant Slaughter. Like, yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, dogs are barking, but for a reason, because I did... Uh, I got me, a, got me a package here from the Shout Factory. It's uh, actually... Uh, they are doing a collector's edition of Night of the Creeps. And oh, that finally came in, huh? Yeah, the one where I, I, I get my Tom Atkins action figure, which is fantastic. Uh, maybe, yeah, I don't do it. Maybe I'll I'll open it at the the end. We'll we'll see. But yeah, let's uh, let's go ahead and get this thing kicked off because all right. We got a good like ninety minute film here. We got to watch. Mm-hmm. So uh, no no links down below. You guys got the movie. Uh, you know iTunes, Amazon, what have you. Blu ray. Uh, I got the the DVD part over here. Blu ray is still sitting in the Xbox because I started to watch it last night to prep and fell asleep because it was late. It's about not four. because you were bored. I didn't run. This really didn't hold up, and I got to bullshit my way through it tomorrow. No, I was very tired. Yeah, and I get home late from work. So there we go. All right, Tyler. Go ahead and get us that countdown. Three, two, one. Yo, Joe. <sighs> Marvel Productions. It's it's so weird to look back on it and just like Marvel was in a completely different place back in the 80s and 90s. Yeah, they were making quality entertainment uh, back then. <laughs> yeah. it, it, will, it does say something when you go on Netflix and Thor Ragnarok and Ant-Man and Wasp are listed under comedies. 
So that's all I need to say. Oh, really? I, I didn't. Uh, yes. I didn't look at that. So, but this uh, this opening is pretty. A- yeah, it's epic. Yeah, by our good friend Larry Houston, who uh, storyboarded this, um, and may have done even more work. I've been trying to get him back on to do more uh, elaborate discussions with him on this. But uh, this was so energizing to watch this as a kid. God, it just the amount of detail, all this hand drawn into this opening, all the balloons in the sequence. I mean, and all the, the, the troopers and Crimson Guard smashing the camera. Oh, it's just awesome. Major blood taking a rocket right, or blast right there. Yeah, yeah and, and, I, and I like how it was like when they were G.I. Joe and on it's uh, there he is with the boom. Yeah. There's Flint. Ah. This what? is how you do a G.I. Joe movie here, people. And I'm sure Steven Storm's like, man, all that cutie bullshit, man. I gotta get Brendan Fraser in here and say a bunch of stupid shit. God, this is so cool. And it, that's what made this so cool is that they really do a great job of managing to just throw in cameos of so many characters. And the song, too, the song is catchy as hell. Like, it, it, it gets you pumped. And that was what was so good about stuff back then, too, is they, they, they made things Go energizing. Rah! Yeah. Once again, like, Snake Eyes sort of just pops in a little bit. And I, like, anytime I, he, I see him, I'm like, yeah! Like, right here, where he just uh, took yeah. over this. Still one of the flight pods. Yeah. That's the sequence of Alpine. Catch it on there. I forgot the name of that, that particular Cobra vehicle is there. I, I know most of them. I, I'm more I'm more knowledgeable about the characters than a lot of the vehicles because I was just um, I didn't have hardly any vehicles as yeah. G.I. Joe as a kid. Yeah, it was more yeah. about the figures. Same Not here. Because, it, it only... only mainly because no one ever got them, and I was most of. I mean, I guess you know when a G.I. Joe figure cost three dollars back then, parents were more inclined to buy a three dollar G.I. Joe than buy any you know a fifteen twenty dollar you know vehicle. Yeah, uh, that's that's where the grandparents usually came in was with the the vehicles and and other relatives. They yeah, would be. I only had one as a kid. I had one vehicle that my grandparents got me as a uh, a late Christmas present, and that's the only Joe vehicle I had. A um, like a a, a flight rocket pack that on the box where it has crystal ball front, uh, flying it, and that was the only thing that I had. It, like. That equal as a vehicle, so I would have to use other vehicles from other toy lines to, you know, make up like the RoboCop car from the RoboCop animated series. I would use that as like a GI Joe car sometimes because nice. the Joes, the the Joes fit in almost anything you had accessible. I used them in Castle Grayskull and Snake Mountain. I mean, Joes were like the the uh, almost like the perfect action figure because you could use them anywhere with anything. Ah, right, here we go. Yeah, with the starring Don Johnson as Lieutenant Falcon. I like this, like the animation of the, the stuns and the reflection of that gator's eye. Burgess that's the same we didn't see Croc Master you know, out there with his alligator or something like that. That's, that's something, too. That Sergeant that. Slaughter is. Sergeant, Sergeant Slaughter. Slaughter. Uh, usually they put, like, as himself in most movies. That's kind of funny. They were just like, Sergeant Slaughter as Sergeant Slaughter. And, and it, it, oh, go ahead. Oh, oh, I was gonna say, was it uh, when when Slaughter turned heel, was it harder for you to to watch? See, yeah, and, I, 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 and, I, and that really just confused me a lot as a kid, you know, because I uh, you know I knew of Sergeant Slaughter and thought he was great, and then I saw him, you know, in WWF as a heel. I never saw him any, as anything else prior to that. So I thought, what the hell? Like I, I just it just didn't it didn't you know make you like emotionally like irritated or anything, but I just, in, in my mind, I'm like, I don't get that. I don't get that at all. Like slaughters up. He's beating up on Hulk Hogan, but he's a, a great hero in GI Joe. So I just, I looked at him as just, um, you know, a GI Joe hero. And I love this. This is probably one of the best moments in the movie is this sequence of Serpento berating Cobra's finest here. Cause it's just seeing all the, the people on hand here. Like this panning, sh- it's beautifully animated too. This panning shot of all the heavy hitters of Cobra in the same room. Something you just didn't see that much of. So when I saw it, it was a- it was exciting to see Storm Shadow and Major Blood and Xander and um, uh, Tomex and Zamon and so forth. And Cobra Commander sporting his black cape. And also, uh, I noticed this 
during this, a lot of words, a lot of big words being used mm -hmm. in the dialogue going back and forth. And uh, that's also refreshing to, to go back and, and see because I, it's serious. They're not dumbing it down for kids. They're but but it's also like, like, you know, think you're, you're four or five years old and you're like pompous. Like, what does that mean? And I, I don't know. I think it, it I, maybe you weren't the same way as a kid, but when I would hear words that I didn't really know, we always had like a dictionary on hand. I would go and like look them up and see what it meant. That way I could understand it better. I know I, you probably weren't that way. No, I, I, I just took it as like it was very adult dialogue. And I, I just thought, wow, I don't know what that means, but you know, it sounds cool. <laughs> just, be, you know, because that, that was what was so great about this, about these characters too. And, What's cool about this is like you're you you know in the last episode of the last season before this came out, um, there's a separation of like Cobra Commander. I mean, because there's there's that that struggle for power in the in season two between Cobra Commander and Serpentor, and everyone's kind of siding with Serpentor. And by the last episode, the seeds of separation are really starting to start. But in this, everyone's turning against Cobra Commander, and in the comics. They have the Civil War on Cobra Island where Serpentor is leading one group, Cobra Commander is leading the other. Of course, it's not the real Cobra Commander, but still. Destro is kind of off on his own, kind of playing. I really I really enjoy this track right here, too. Sorry to kind of like yeah. interject. Oh, no, no, no. It's, it's but that bass line at the beginning, and then it like kicks in. Yeah, yeah. And Pythona is uh, a, a wonderful female character, just very uh, someone you do not want to mess with. I used, I used to get kind of angry at everybody because I, I love Cobra Commander so much as a kid, and I did not like everybody turning on it. It pissed me off. It's like, hell with you guys, man. I'm on his side. Even though I loved Serpentor as a kid, too, I was, I was Cobra Commander all the way. Like I, He was a villain, too, that I, I you know, because as a kid, so, sometimes you, you're all about the heroes, like I was with Batman, but with like He-Man, Thundercast, and G.I. Joe, man, I love the villains as much as I did the heroes, and I was Team Cobra Commander all the way. I was more of a Cobra fan, too, as a kid, uh, just because they were so visually striking. I, I'm i still the same way, like, as a kid, like, with most of the cartoons I watched, and especially with wrestling, like, heels, man, they, they were just, uh, they were cool. They really were. Like, I mean, they, they're allowed to be more diverse in their look. You know, heroes have to look kind of a certain way. The villains can be like Pythona here. You don't know anything. I, I mean, have not have, if you haven't seen this and you're watching it the first time, you're like, who the hell is this? Like you, you assume it's, well, it could be anybody. But, uh, I mean, all the villains, um, I mean, from Storm Shadow to Major Blood, the Dreadnoughts, which, you know, a faction in their own, you know, just kind of, you know, grape soda loving, you know, uh, nasty guys that you know mercenaries you kind of figure they probably have bad hygiene things like that too but they're a lovable bunch of villains and they're all so drastically different i mean they all they all look like they fit together but they're all very distinct and, and that i like let's let's think about it the cover commander had it coming though with everyone turning on him hey, he's put everybody through so much bullshit like Eventually, they're going to get I mean, tired. It of makes it. sense, and I, I remember, and I listened to the commentary last year, all the way through with uh, with Buzz Dixon, and he talked about God. This music's stuff. cool. Sorry. Oh no, no, it is. Every, all, all the, there's so many great musical moments in this, and great action sequences too, which you feel like it's like God. Like, why can't movies have sequences this epic? Like, they don't require heavy special effects. Like, if you're having something like Python in here, just great music and great choreography and making it sound like this is something serious and exciting that you're you know now everyone's got to turn and look at the camera or, or stop and make a joke and and all this like her slamming the crimson guards had I mean, just cracking the yeah, well and, and the crimson guards look really cool too like yeah. I, I i really love the designs and and uh the cape is a nice touch on cobra commander yeah i always thought that was was a cool look for him um um, now, uh, when it comes to Cobra Commander's looks, do you prefer this look or you, do you the the hood? As a kid, I was all about the battle mask, but you know, as I got older, I absolutely love the hood. So now I just love both. Like to to me, 
they're both as equally important. I can't say one is better than the other because they both are so menacing in their in their simplicity. Like it's just and plus Chris Lada's voice too makes Cobra Commando that much more um menacing. And then he can be legitimately funny and you don't feel like he's not threatening. Like I mean there's certain episodes where he makes some good like in uh so a rise to pinto a rise like cobra commander steals the show in every episode he's in during that five parter i mean he's so good in it i like I'm how right. sir pinto like takes the snake and turns into a staff i remember as i got older i really turned on sir pinto i just felt like ah no good but as a kid i remember seeing him for the first time in daycare one, one of my classmates had him and i thought like, who the hell is that man They're like uh, uh, Serpentor? Like, no way! I just thought he was amazing to look at as a kid. It's a shame, too, that, you know, they made Cobra Law... Uh, uh, the, did you ever see, like, the three packs they made to coincide with this movie in 87? Like, uh, the Renegades of Sergeant Slaughter's group, and then they had the Cobra Law Guard, uh, Nemesis Enforcer, and uh, Galopulus in three pack. Did you ever see? No. I remember seeing those at Hills when we were kids. I mean... <sighs> And Pythona I, wasn't in there. I used to wonder, like, well, they released all these other female characters. Why didn't Pythona get a release? So, I, you know, I I was probably present in the toy aisle while those were there, but I have no recollection of seeing I, them. I yeah. saw saw them again for the first time since eighty seven or eighty eight, maybe in eighty eight, uh, at Heroes Con last year in Charlotte. Both two packs in mint condition. We're in this glass case, and of course they three thousand dollars. Yeah, they wanted you to sell over your soul to to buy them, but it was so cool to actually see them in person for the first time since since the late eighties. Because I just thought it was such a you know I'd have to you know rely on pictures on Google to get my fix of looking it because of how awesome they looked. <laughs> Active camo Tyler features color change action. Just say the secret activation words, Chris Pratt, and see him change to full crimson red. Nah, Chris Pratt cr- clearly would be like. Like a, a member of Cobra, he would be my like you know like quick kick and snake eyes have storm shadow is kind of like a, a personal nemesis. Chris Pat would be that douchebag who works for Cobra thinks he's funny, like some sort of mercenary for hire, and I got to go kick his ass every time. He is funny. We've had Parks and Rec play in the uh, in the the bedroom while we sleep. He's oh, actually yeah, exactly because fu- it puts you to sleep. He's actually funny in that. Anyway. I always thought we should have seen more quick kick and snake eyes. I mean, that was something. Of course, that's like a lot, there need, a logical uh, team uh, yep, but... needs to be more snake eyes and uh, everything. Mm-hmm. It is kind of funny how snake eyes sort of, uh, at least to me anyway, kind of became like that Wolverine esque. Like everyone loved him. Well, Wolverine's probably a bad example, but Snake Eyes. Well, no, 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 that's a problem example because you know, as as I got older, I realized that he was he was more than just like the Boba Fett of GI Joe because he's used prominently in the comic books. Like Snake Eyes is a at the forefront, top tier character. He's not someone that's just there and occasionally gets. I mean, no, no, like he like Larry Hama used I mean, used him. I mean, religiously in stories. I mean, all the way to the very even to the point where. Hasbro's like Snake Eyes and the Ninja Force. And in the comics, it's Snake Eyes and the Ninja Force. Like Snake Eyes, Snake Eyes, Snake Eyes. So it's just something that unfortunately we were, you know, I didn't have a whole lot of the comics. So what I had to go by was the cartoons. And that's what made me feel like Snake Eyes was kind of like the Boba Fett. He's used sparingly, but he's so cool. And like, no, 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 no. He's a much a bigger player in the G.I. Joe mythology. But as we've said in earlier commentaries that, you know, because the character can't talk, you know, they felt that, well, we can't use them that much. And, you know, which you see Spirit take on Storm Shadow or Quick Kick take on Storm Shadow. And uh, Firefly here featured in the uh, driver's seat next to the cover. Coming. That was, that's their, one of my brother's, if not his favorite character. It's next to like Storm Shadow's Snake Eyes. He, uh, he's a big Firefly fan. He, fan, excuse me. He, he loves that character to death. And it was not used that much. Like on his own, he's featured in certain episodes, but another character you felt like could have been used a lot more. Any of the masked characters like that had looked like they had like a ninja mask on. I was instantly a fan of as a kid. That's why I like Firefly and Storm Shadow were so cool. Because even though Firefly is not a ninja, but I was oh he's got a mask on. It looks so cool. I always thought snow battles were awesome. Yeah, they are cool. It's, it kind of adds an extra level of danger because of the cold and. You know, it's it's not necessarily the most comfortable terrain to be fighting in. 
I kind of wonder. I kind of wonder though if the inspiration in a way was like Battle of Hoth. It's like oh, we need to have something similar to that and put it in the movie. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I could see that. I mean, and they even say too, like in the commentary, like Buzz Dixon, like the, the character of, of Chuckles was drawn from Miami Vice, even though he looks more like Magnum PI because he's wearing a Hawaiian shirt. But they clearly were inspired by you know popular things of the day, and I, I'm sure like Empire, you know, coming out in the early '80s, I'm sure like a an epic snow fight, much like in the Hoth fight, to start the movie off with a big fight sequence like that. Yeah, it may have been inspiration. Um, I need to get my uh, GI Joes. I need to get my parents to dig those out. I, I used to remember where they were, Emma, and then they like redid the closet, and they were in there, and they moved them somewhere else. And I was like, "Hey, do you guys know where those are?" And they're like, "Uh, I'm like, shit. <laughs> you better get on that, dude. I'm gonna. I will have to, ha- you know, just." Pay you a very violent visit. Because now, now that I think missing. about it, now that I think about it, I think I could clear some space. And oh, of course you could have to tell me. I put, don't know, put, man. I, I ain't just got no display room. all the Joes that I have. Which, honestly, I it feels like a lot, but I bet when I like display them, have them out, it, it probably doesn't look like oh, anything. They're all to piled most up in one box like that. It looks a lot more bigger, you know. But I still got all my Joes. They're in they're in the storage in my mom's house because I literally have no room to put all my Joes out. I like uh, any time that Cobra freaks out, Commander. He's just like, ah, ah. Uh, yeah, he he sells the, the drama of like, oh, I've got to get the hell out of here. We're getting our ass kicked. And I love it. it, it and of course, that's that's the character through and through. Is like any any opportunity, like Serpentor finds himself like, you know, overwhelmed, or the odds are against him. Cobra's not. <laughs> Cobra Commander's like. Ah well, uh, oh well, let's let's retreat here. And this animation of Serpentor being electrocuted just ah, oh, it's so cool. It's such a shame that this didn't get released in theaters because of all the kids crying over Optimus Prime. You know, because when they killed Duke, we can't do that, man. We gotta change that. Release it straight to video because Transformers was such a bomb because all the kids were crying and bitching and moaning. Yeah, but I could see like little Tyler going to the movie theater and being like, "I was not a fan of Duke, though, so it would not have bothered me." Like, no, I, I, no, I no, 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 no. Like, I, well, I, I'm, was... I'm talking about Transformers. When Optimus died, you would have been like, <laughs> "You, yeah, you would have been one of those kids." No, because I didn't watch Transformers as much as I did uh, He Man and, and GI Joe and uh, Thundercats. It just, I liked it, but I, I, the toys, like as as I've said before, they were. Um, that made me feel like I was inferior. Like I couldn't play with them because I didn't have a damn PhD to transform them. <laughs> so I was like, ah, help. Plus they came off as so brittle. Like it didn't take much to break them. I'm like, I'm not, no. I just want to get down and fight. I got to wait 30 minutes here. Hang on, I'm Optimus. I got to transform Starscream here. You know, I was like, I ain't got time for that bullshit. Yeah, even even when we got the re-releases of uh, Starscream, you and I had trouble. Yeah, like, they made me feel them. dumb. And I'm not ashamed <laughs> to admit it. Which is why I only had... I think two as a kid. Well, it's like with the the sound wave I got. <clears throat> I was sitting there transforming. I'm like, this doesn't seem right. Like I'm looking at the instructions. I'm like, no. And it turns out that one of the pieces had been put on like upside down and backwards. I was like, well, no fucking wonder. So I had to like pop that out, put it back in the right way, and then start. I was like, see, when you deal with stuff like that, the instructions that are not as clear, and you have to go rely on like a five year old on YouTube to explain it to you. You know, you realize, you know what? I love the mythology of Transformers, but I'll stick to G.I. Joe. Yeah. Well, the part of it, too, is like you said, it, it, it kind of fragile. And when mm-hmm. I, I like I didn't want to break it or have something snap that I couldn't fix, you know. Just not fun. Like G.I. Joe's could take a bidding until like, you know, the, the legs break off or something like that, which I never happened. But I two pricks at my birthday party in, in 1990 broke my deep six. The only deep six figure I had was the second release of deep six. And they just thought it was funny as hell to sit in the back and just, <laughs> and then he just broke in half. And on my birthday, I'm like, you assholes. How did they even get the figure anyway? I had, he, I, I was playing with him in the car prior to that anyway. So I, I had left him in the car by accident. So when they found him in the back, they just thought it was funny. Just, oh, 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 oh. and I'm like, come on, guys, be careful with it. And after my mom dropped him off, I got back to and saw that he was broken in half. Holy shit! What well, what did you what like? What did you do? I mean, couldn't really go after him. It was Justin Twine and Jason Queen <laughs> who were the culprits of it. As if I didn't have enough reasons to dislike Jason Queen to this day. 
he is a uh, half responsible for destroying my uh, my deep six figure. Hey, if I ever see him again, I'm gonna be like, "Hey, you remember when you uh, you destroyed Tyler's deep six figure?" It's like, no, but I remember I used to mess with his hair all the time. Oh, those were some crazy times. I just want to smash his head clean out of his ass. Much like how the Royal Guard is giving it to the Joes here. That this is just like just knocking the hell out of them. Which I know we're kind of talking over. This is just this. Uh, yeah, but I, I mean, that's kind of partly what we do when we, we watch these. And I feel like people by now have the expectation that while we watch this, all these childhood memories and other things are going to flood to our minds. And... Yeah, I mean, and I and I have a lot regarding G.I. Joe because, you know, G.I. Joe was a major part of my childhood and in my teens and in, in, into becoming a man. I was still into G.I. Joe and still into this day. Um, it's just it stuck with me for so long. I just the. I just, it's such an exciting property, and it's a shame that uh, it really hasn't been taken advantage of in a positive way. We got two shitty films, and... You know, I, heard, I heard the second one wasn't as, as bad. Yeah, as bad, but... I, 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 I'll watch that second movie. No, I, I, I have no interest in it. I'll watch it this weekend. I'm Go sure on. that you will. I'm sure you'll make it a priority. Yeah. But when, when you look at... You know, just the group standing next to Destro. You got <laughs> uh, that. That was beautifully animated. Ah, <laughs> uh, that's great. All the snow and everything. I mean, yeah, it's, it's so so. It just looks amazing. All of this does, and I mean, most of these movies that you know are originally like animated series for like twenty two minutes, and they give them the opportunity to put budget towards a a film. I mean, it's fun like with. When we did Mask of Phantasm, the animation looks even better than it does on the TV series, much like how this looks even better than the TV series. Um, I mean, it's a great swan song for the series, because you know, then after this, the show would you know stay in syndication until Deke would take over and start doing new episodes to kind of bring in the 88 uh, wave of, of characters and 89 and so on and so forth. Um, but this would be the I love the Dreadnoughts here. They're, kinda, I mean, they're, they're, they're a great faction. I'm kind of surprised that uh, the G.I. Joe hasn't found its way really back in some form or fashion back onto the, the shelves. I mean, I, I remember the last attempt they did. I mean, it just, I feel like, ha I don't know what it is about that. I mean, I, I can't knock Hasbro because Hasbro acknowledges that, but they're all about pushing Transformers more than G.I. Joe. And Probably because the G.I. Joe toys that came out last were based on the last two movies, and obviously they didn't do that great. Um, and they had the, the 25th anniversary line and the, the, uh, the you know, commemorative series that were available in stores for a while. I which did uh, very well. But um, I, I'm sorry. Like, Give us some... Uh, do a line of six inches, man. That would be fantastic. You know, and I, I felt like a lot of hardcore Joe fans will probably be against it because the three and three quarter is the quintessential, but much like with classics and He-Man to have a fully poseable uh, Storm Shadow or a, a, a Xander or a Thrasher or a Big Boa. Yeah, I mean, I Flint here, because Flint's the best, man. I don't care what anybody says. Flint is the best. Um, and I like General Hawk, too, which they established that in the, in the, the first episode of season two because you, you're giving Hawk and Beachhead come into the mix. And I'm glad they explained that because as a kid, you know, I was always led to believe like Flint and Duke were kind of like equals, you know, but clearly that's not. There's a pecking order. And you got, uh, here's Beachhead. Well, well, it is the military. It is, but as a kid, I just didn't didn't quite know. And this uh, lovable lineup of, uh, of uh, new recruits here, which uh, Big Law finally got his first figure a few years ago. He was the only one of this group that didn't get an action figure back in the eighties. Maybe I don't know if they exist because I haven't done research. But if anyone out there has done a GI Joe like fan film that's actually pretty good, that that would be kind of awesome. Like just I mean, a little so short. people have done actually. Uh, uh, Mac Keanu Reeves' uh, stunt double that Erica's friends with. Yeah, actually played Zartan in a fan film. Nice. Yeah, yeah. All I right. saw a picture of him. Like, holy shit, man! And, and uh, awesome too. And oddly enough, the the weekend we decide to do this is actually the weekend that Joe Fest is going on. Yeah, down, yeah, down in is. Georgia. 
one of our listeners to fans of power is actually down there right now. I saw uh, some pictures of him with Sergeant Slaughter. He actually got him like in the, the, the clutch. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. It looked pretty cool. <laughs> I had tunnel rat. I had the second version of tunnel rat, the, the snot, snot, the sonic fighter tunnel rat that came with the, uh, uh, the the machine gun or uh, gun sound effect backpack, which God, I love that. That was an amazing accessory. The son- the first batch of Sonic Fire, second batch, you couldn't take the backpacks off, which was bullshit. So you had like this awesome figure, but this big backpack that made it yeah. top heavy, so you couldn't hold on to it. A tunnel Rat was a cool character. Though. I heard he was essentially modeled after uh, Larry Hama himself, but you can't really. He doesn't really look Asian to me though. But still a cool character nonetheless, though. <clears throat> they, they pack in an awful lot in this film, too. Like, I feel like there's a lot going on, but I, I don't feel like a lot of it. Um, I mean, especially, too, like, because you're getting new characters, new heroes and villains, but you're also getting a full fix of characters you're familiar with by this point. So I feel like they do a pretty good balancing act of, of showing us footage of, of all the new recruits in action. Uh, from here and throughout it, and making Falcon such a prominent guy when you got Don Johnson playing the the voice, but you just you see in oh, I mean, Serpentor cover Commander and Destro and Duke Flint. I mean, everybody gets a lot of screen time, so it's a it's a tough act when you got so many characters you want to try and feature. And uh, I'm sure the Sun Painter probably disagreed and felt like, well, Shipwreck's not featured enough. Well, I mean, he is in it and has a, has a few moments of dialogue. Well, law, and order, law and order. I just feel like his voice doesn't fit. Like he's in a, apparently has an Hispanic character, but I feel like his voice just doesn't fit the look. I was going to ask because you probably have some familiarity with uh, the GI Joe fan base in terms of its presence and message boards and what have you. Uh, going back to what we talked about and our preference of look with Cobra Commander, is there sort of in the fandom like sort of a, a set general opinion on which one they prefer and also going deeper to that, like you just said, that some fans are probably like, well, Shipwreck isn't in this enough. Or, what What's the general consensus on this film as well as a whole within the, the community? I think I think the film the film has its fans, but because you know the they take Cobra in such a a drastic different direction where they're not they're not a grounded faction that they're led by this you know apparently what's thought to be extinct you know tribe of you know above beyond you know creatures almost with an insect you know technology and things like that to it it's Kind of push it in a direction that was unnecessary, um, but I, I and and for a while it, it really felt like the film was not as well liked. But as over the years, I've seen that there is appreciation for this film, um, regardless of the the different directions it takes. Because you know, so many of us grew up on it. We loved it for what it was and didn't see it as like ah, I don't agree with this. Um, I just thought it was great because you get so many characters thrown in and it just felt like you, you can find someone in here. And of course, when, when me and Derek really got back into this movie itself, cause I, I bought a VHS copy in the late nineties or mid nineties at a, uh, Suncoast, which is the one I have autographed by Sergeant Slaughter. Um, we watched this to death cause that was when Rhino was starting to re-release some of the VHSs. And, um, me and my brother really got into Mercer who was one of the, the renegades that Slaughter trains. And we were just thought like a next Cobra Viper, like, dude, that that's gold. That's money in the bank. I mean, that is a badass character and that should have been used even more. And uh, he'd be featured a little bit more in the Deke series, but I didn't like the design of him here, but here's Jinx, which uh, I always wanted to figure of her as a kid. Cause I thought a red ninja just looked really, really cool. You remember when uh, I took you, over to Showtime Video for the first time, and you saw all mm-hmm. those big box GI Joe VHSs. <laughs> yes, you I lost did. Your, you lost your mind. I did because it was just to walk to go in and see He Man, GI Joe, Transformers, She-Ra, and I think Thundercats, definitely Turtles, and old WCW WWF VHSs all right there at your fingertips. You're like, 
I remember I rented the Revenge of Cobra because I had not seen it. It was it was not playing on TV, and nor was it any of the video stores. And I had a lot of video stores around me as a kid that still had GI Joe, and none of them had some of those that Nathan's video store had. So when I rented Revenge of Cobra, I lived in Blacksburg at the time, which driving from Blacksburg to Pulaski was just under an hour. And I remember renting it and having to take it back to, like that day. I remember my dad got so mad. Went, You're wasting a lot of gas driving all the way over there. I'm like, yeah, but it was worth it, Dad. It's just Watch an episode that I haven't seen. Yeah, he just he didn't get it, nor did he care. But I remember I remember him giving me a lot of crap from the drive back to Pulaski because I hadn't got a chance to watch it when I rented it, and it was just it was like, oh my god, this is amazing, man. I I feel like I could pick Don Johnson's voice out of anything. It's very distinct. It is. Yeah. And uh, apparently, too, like um, Falcon was not Duke's half brother; he was General Hawk's son, which I, I actually think would have worked better. Um, and that Duke, you know, want, wants to, you know, take him under his wing, and you know, Falcon being like a disappointment to his father. Like I, I just, I don't know why they decided to go that route. But when I found out that he was originally going to be General Hawk's son, I thought, man, they should have went that way, but. But anyway, uh, we are given this half brother storyline, which still works. And Don does a great job with the the Falcon character. Come on, babe. Yeah, I'm out of here. <laughs> and he's playing the ladies' man. You Go know? figure. Yeah. Because yeah, at this time, Miami Vice would have been in its third season when this movie came out. Which uh, is something that we might have down the pipeline eventually. Yeah, we both want to start. I really want to get Nathan knee deep into Miami Vice because I've been a fan for years. Yeah, so we've been. Talking like I'm a loner when it comes to it. Like Erica's really into my. She loves watching it pretty religiously too. So I, I, I've always wanted to get Nathan into it. My brother was a fan of it, but he doesn't really watch it anymore. But, so uh, we've we've tossed around the idea of doing yet another podcast that would uh, take us from beginning to end, which would take us probably about ten years to do with Miami Vice. And apparently, too, like this sequence here, Zoran was supposed to be almost flat out nude. That they, I think they actually anim or store or at least storyboard or even animated it where she's not wearing much, or, or it's implied she has no top on. Yeah. Just look at this ragtag group of guys. Like I just all of, and I always like Zorana's look, especially when they they illustrate her in the comics with like long pink hair. I was like, man, that, that's just such a great look for her. Like the. The, the torn, like, shoulderless uh, paint top there and everything. And, I mean, just this whole group itself. And you see this kind of brain-looking transport. This haunted music it just melts off of them. Like, God, yeah. that's technology for you. I've often felt, and I've, I've never bothered to look, but I've often felt like how... Like Cobra Commander's name was just like kind of a placeholder, and I think it just stuck. Nemesis Enforcer comes off as a placeholder name, and then they just left it. Almost like when they came up with the concept of the character, we'll just put a name there Nemesis Enforcer. Like he's the bad guy's enforcer. And they just never came up with anything else that would work, so just leave it. Which, Joe fans, if that's wrong, please by all means correct me, but that's just but, kind of putting my own, you know. We'll leave your hate comments down below. Yeah, I'm encouraged. If I got Th it wrong, thumbs I'm, down I'm, the I'm, video, thumbs down the video, leave a comment down below. Be like, yeah. you assholes. But this I will is what say it this: is. I take great pride in my knowledge. And if I got it, like him slapping her on the ass in a children's cartoon, that's balls, man. And and then trying to you know get he, that's sexual harassment right there in today's standards. And I love it. <laughs> but I'm I'm not ashamed. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong because I I I love GI Joe and I want to pay as much respect to this. As I do He Man and Turtles. And if something's wrong, I want to know about it. But, um, love this playing up that Falcon's just thinking, ah, there's only one possible probability. Anything in any of this. I mean, of course it does. 
Did you have any of the dreadnoughts as a kid? I don't think so. I don't know, man. I it it sucks for me to say this. I also leave your hate comments down below and dislike the video if you want. But I was into the Joes. I was super into it as a kid, and it just seemed like all that knowledge that I had at that time just evaporated. Like I can tell you certain things, but most of it's just gone. I don't know if that's just my mind being consumed by other things as I got older, or if my brain is just shit. I'm gonna go. With my brain is shit because yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll I, 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 I'm, I, I'm turning <laughs> into my dad. Like I, it's gonna be a thing where I, I'm just gonna start forgetting everything. But that's why you do this kind of stuff, and when you have me as a best friend, like I, I'm here to refresh your memory to keep your. The, the juice is flowing that you might have, like I get all the dreadnoughts, like every member of the dreadnoughts. And then we got Alpine and Bazooka and Gung Ho, which I love the team up of, of Bazooka and, and Alpine. Uh, they, they, they deserve like their own comic book. I'll, uh, I'll send a message to my parents today. I'll be like, Hey, you guys think you can uh, try to dig out the Joes? Cause my dad took like a, a, a like a little military like, ammo box and like, repainted it and like drew snake eyes on the side of it and it's actually I'm really bad that. yeah it's really badass Did, uh, but don't you have like, as fuck the, too. like the, the the like the big plastic joe carrying yeah, case yeah, yeah. The black one yeah yeah with, that's uh yeah i think the fourth version of snake eyes yeah with the ski mask I, on there yeah i uh used to keep them in the little lockbox thing made, but i started getting too many of them i had to buy that that bigger <laughs> one that would just hold everybody so those hold the figures and uh that box has pretty much all the accessories and then i have an, another little uh brown like just a small plastic thing that i put all the uh the cards on that i cut out off of the the backs so this sequence here would have been really really good if, that, if knowing that was his son that caused like Sepentor to be set free and, and three of the Joes got severely injured during all this. Like, I, I love how, I mean, they really emphasize like Hawk is like fed up with him. And it's like there's repercussions for that. I think it's good to see that the stakes are, are, are pretty legit in this. And then we see this like this flying bug here. So, so we, <laughs> we, we go from re realism to, you know, fl a giant flying bug shit. Yeah, like, but that's. Asparagus trees. <laughs> but that's part of the charm of a lot of these shows is you have elements that that are well, grounded see, it's, it's stuff like this like i said it, when when you see this and you go from cobra has a an abandoned you know um uh, uh castle that they're that they set up the current headquarters or a massive uh, snake temple they set up in you see stuff like that and then you go from that to this it's a drastic change, and I, I mean, I and I couldn't say for sure if a lot of Joe fans as kids disliked. I sure as hell, I loved it. I thought it was great. Like I, I, I accepted whatever they threw at me. I, oh, here's here's Galopulus's first appearance. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no. Ticks. No, thank you. Yep. So cool, all of this. I, I love it for what it is, people. I, I still love my original, um, more grounded uh, background for Cobra, but how, how the hell can you argue with a visual like Galopulus? I had a poster when uh, Devil's Dude was putting out posters and had Galopulus, Pythona, Nemesis Enforcer, and one of the Royal Guards on the poster, and it was a beautiful poster. Me and my brother both had one. And, of course, when we, got, when we moved and everything, they got lost time and everything and torn up and trying to find them on ebay they are not not easy to find and it's a beautiful post you can do a google search for it it's a badass poster back when they were putting out beautiful artwork posters of of gi joe back then when um image and the devil's do were really um which i think devil's do is still doing gi joe i think but i, I think when the, the when the comics came back out me and my brother were kept up with it pretty religiously for a few years, and then I think I just got tired of like the artwork like being so shitty, and the stores weren't weren't that great to kind of keep me around, so I just kind of left it. But our buddy Kevin Sharp did a poster, um, a beautiful uh, collage poster that me and my brother both owned. Um, I had no idea it was him until years later. I'm like, holy shit, Kevin did that poster. I own that poster. <laughs> 
Yeah, I think we showed that. We showed that off on uh, yeah, the yeah, episode of Fans power. power that he was on with us. Yeah, sure yeah. did. And th- I remember this was when episode two would end here with this moment of uh, the trial of Cobra Commander. And then it would say, to be continued. I'm like, no, we got to wait till tomorrow. <laughs> That was also a, a, a smart way to do that too, splitting it up like that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's because um, I would sit in the video stores, but um, obviously they, and with all those like original bumpers and introductions with the uh, Sergeant Slaughter. I mean, it was it was like, hey, we're going to go all out and add some uh, extra flavor to this uh, televised release of it. Let's see, rock and roll there. I hope that they do try again at some point to uh, p- put out a live action film, but actually put care and pride and into I it. Mean, it. And that, that's why, you know, I, I'm so down on this. I mean, obviously, Rise of Cobra speaks for itself. I don't need to go into that. And, and I never saw retaliation, anything with the rock, and I tried to avoid like the plague. Um, and I, th- I, I, I think you should come back around to the rock. He's, he's doing all right. He's just. I know, I know. Anyway, go ahead. Yeah, but anyway, I feel like there's so. I mean, the the the, the cast of characters for just GI Joe and Cobra alone, like you could do so many movies, and not even feature the same cast. You could do like like there's Low Light. I mean, you could make him a prominent character. General Hawk, Jinx, Law and Order. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. Of- but I, I guess the the problem that you would run into is just when this was out, obviously. Like the the world was still in a similar kind of place, but things are definitely different now too. So I maybe maybe it's best to just let it lie because it probably wouldn't turn out though. And unless they decided to take it in a direction like this movie did, where you just throw in these otherworldly elements and well, not have that, it like, as grounded, you it, know, it doesn't need to be like it doesn't have to be made fantasy like to make it a good sell i mean they are apparently still going through with the snake eyes film much like the bumblebee film which i think the p- powers that be realized that those transformers were absolutely sloppy shit and so were the two gi joe films like we can we can there look we've got these two properties that are making lots of money still for hasbro they're popular with fans still there is a demand for these characters but we keep we keep releasing these you know horseshit films that michael bay is just like you know you know, taking a dump looks at ah, brilliant. And then yeah, and then the you know one. you have something come around that's like Bumblebee. That's just a it's simplistic a and approach. Put into it. Yeah, yeah. Um, which and it actually like, worked. How about that? Yeah. So a uh, Snake Eyes film, which I mean, I think it's safe to say Snake Eyes is the most popular character. There is no, you know, question that there is room to do a Snake Eyes film. There's room to do a uh, a classic Joe versus Cobra film. There's a, there's room to do. Uh, a flint based. I mean, you could do so many like films with GI Joe. The the dreadnoughts could be the sole villains of a GI Joe film. Not even having anything to do with Cobra. They are just hired by Cobra, but they are the villains of the film. Like, there's so much you could do. It could be a massive franchise if they really wanted to. If they decide to like, look, we don't have to make everything funny for it to be popular with people. People are so quick to forget how many films were so successful, and they're not comedies. They're actually treating the source, source material as like this is serious. With uh, I mean, little sprinkles of humor here and there, but for the most part, they treat it with, you know, it's uh, this. I remember I was like, "Oh man, that's what Cobra Commander looked like." No way! I was just like totally taken aback when I saw this, and you put it together. Yeah, yeah, I I was the same way as kids. Like, holy <laughs> shit! No way! He's got multiple eyes too. So like, no wonder he wears a mask. Well, I was like that with with. Uh... Everybody, it was Cobra Commander, Snake Eyes, especially. I'm like, what? What does he look like under there? Because uh, I was just like you. The, the comics sort of eluded me. I I didn't really have many of them, so uh, I I go back to this every time we talk about GI Joe when they came out with like the the, the, the Hall doll. of Fame figures. Yes, yeah. and I was like, oh wait, you mean I can like take what's Destro like under there? It was all disappointment. Yeah, I remember I got Snake Eyes for Christmas. My brother got Cobra Commander. And we were seeing the commercials and everything. And we opened those things up, and they're still wearing masks. 
Both of them. Yeah. Son of a bitch. Yeah. Deathstroke was the only one. I remember they hyped up that one to say, hey, you can see what it looks like. And then yeah. when I, one of my buddies at school had it, and it was just a blonde guy, which yeah. <laughs> Deathstroke does have blonde hair. But as a kid, you're thinking it's going to be some mangled mess or something like yeah. that. And it's like, he's a pretty boy. Yeah, but to me, I can appreciate that now because like, there's logic why he wears that mask. It, that, and that alluded to me because I didn't see, I forgot the name of the episode where you see Destro's backstory. Um, the more Lady J goes to that house in Scotland and Destro's got that cult there too. It has like a, um, ah, uh, shit. Um, I forgot what it was, but G.I. Joe fans, you know the episode I'm talking about. It's a great episode. Man, Burgess Meredith just, why he didn't do more voice work? Cause I know he has yeah. a fantastic voice. <laughs> you think like Little Mick, you know, even though he's superimposing the Rocky films, but man, he makes for one hell of a villain. Yeah, between that and playing the penguin and yeah, doing this. and then you see him as a, as a gentle uh, actor in Clash of the Titans, and then the smart ass old grandpa and grumpy yeah. old man. Which is the, kind of the first time I ever heard that you can wish in one hand and crap in the other and see which one fills up first. I We say this so many times on this podcast, but I, just amazing that the cartoons that they made back then just... I, like actually taught kids things. If it wasn't like big words that made you like I did go out and well, what does that mean? They actually just treated you like you were smart and not stupid. I don't, I, I really don't know where I was going with that. It's well, just I mean, the, I mean, we're look at this. We're watching cover commander's face being exposed to this germ. that's going to pretty much, you know, eventually, you know, turn him into a snake, but it looks like it's killing him. I mean, I mean the, the animation itself and what they're doing there, um, you know, we watch this now is like, you know, yeah, it's, it's just part of the story. But, you know, what they're doing here is it's it's serious stuff. The the material is taking itself seriously. Like you can balk at the you know, the the new cast of characters. Ah, this is too far fetched, it's not realistic enough. But even when you watch the the anime series itself, there are some lighthearted moments, but for the most part it's a it's a serious, you know, good versus evil cartoon and it's not really dumbed down from beginning to end. You know, you have to keep it toned down a bit to remind kids it is this is fun, but yeah, but they also show it's like real stakes are involved. Yeah, there's danger here. Yeah, and it, you know, and to, it, to us as kids too, like we didn't know anything else, and you know, so when this stuff is coming out, you're seeing it for the first time, and you don't feel like you're you're in an altered state. You know, like, you know, here's Lift Tech is going to shove Falcon out. Like, oh man, this is this. I, I, I'm now like, uh, I'm, I'm, I, I, I'm devastated. This is, this is cruelty towards another human being. I need to go to social media and post. I demand a public apology. Yeah, you yeah. Know? yeah. And this, yeah. this coming up here is one of my favorite sequences too, because we're getting introduced to the Renegades and Mercer coming up here. Just, it's, it's just, just awesome. I love, love, love. I went to Happy's Flea Market in high school on a mission uh, to find Mercer, and they had him with his file card. I remember I had to dig around one of the guys, because like, did you find him? I'm like, yeah, I found him! Yeah, here he is. I miss Happies. I do, too. The smell of Happies and finding He-Man, G.I. Joe, Thundercats. Oh, musty smell of, you know, addicts and stuff. Yeah, dude, stuff. It, that, it, that was like the epitome of Dirt Mall right there. Yeah, and it was it was wonderful. And if you couldn't find anything on the inside, you, uh, you go uh, early morning on a on a weekend, and they'd have vendors outside. It was cool. Yeah, I've seen Putty with my backbone. <laughs> so cool. It was brought up in the chat that Burgess Meredith would have uh, been a really good voice for Thanos. Uh, possibly. I've always kind of thought of Thanos' voice to be kind of kind of deep. There he is, Sergeant Slaughter. Yeah. Wasn't there an issue too with like the WWF and Slaughter for doing this? I think at the time because um, 
and I've heard the story like a few times as well, but he really, he pretty much was devoting himself to this. And they weren't really using him much in wrestling at the time anyway. So I was trying to remember what the initial issue was. Um, and I think really, <laughs> what, really what it was too is like they weren't really going to try and use him. Because I know like the minute Slaughter's contract was up with Hasbro, he gets a phone call. Like, obviously, Vince had been eye- eyeballing and wanting to use him, but I guess decided to wait until he was done with his um, G.I. Joe persona. But uh, Well, it says here in the chat, Slaughter left WWF because Vince didn't want him to do it. I remember hearing something like that, though. And that, that, may, that may have been, yeah, yeah I, I want to say, because I listened to a couple of interviews where he discusses that. What you got to do that for? We, we we got the action figures right here. Goddamn, pal. Yeah. And, of course, they had the Sergeant Slaughter in the LGN line, too. So I, Vince's obsession with, like, saying, like, you don't want people to go out, be in movies, and draw more attention. He's like, no, no, we have to make them. We're like, God, man, what, what yeah. an egotistical yeah. idiot. Yeah, it's all, uh, it's all uh, crashing down now. Yeah, because they're convinced we can make movies. They're like all those shitty films that they've attached themselves to, and they still keep pumping them out. Who the hell keeps financing this shit? As a kid, I did feel pretty bad for Cobra Commander. Oh, I did too. I felt terrible for him. Because I, I like the character a lot too. And and then I, I like seeing him and Roblox having the team up. I was a big fan of Roblox too, but then... I did get kind of fed up with the fact that he's got a rhyme every time he says something. I'm like, stop it already! <laughs> it's like, like you uh, just can't have this big, big badass brawler. It's like Bullhorn and Black Dynamite. Yeah. Which that works for that, but but it is, I'm like, <laughs> dude, stop! I don't need to see clear to fracture your ears. You'll hear later on here in a bit. But I love the character and. He ain't the rock. <laughs> I feel like a lot of fun could be had with this part of the mythology, though. You know, but I, 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 would, I, I wouldn't wanna... want it to be a direct tie into Cobra's. Unless, like, Cobra Commander, you know, like, looked at them in history and thought, like, I'd like to draw inspiration from, from this prehistoric extinct civilization that once existed or something like that, you know. Maybe, but just to find some way of drawing an M, but I would not want it to be the 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 root source of, of Cobra's, you know, beginnings. Getting yeah, to see a little bit of snake eyes, eyes action yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Which I was always excited to see. I'm like, ah, oh, that's it. That's all I get to <laughs> see. Like, damn it. I love Lady J too. Like Lady J is by far my favorite female joke because I just think she's one of the boys, but she can also be a real girl. But girl Tyler, too. there hasn't been a strong female presence oh, in know, anything until Captain Wonder Marvel Woman. came out. Captain Marvel, yeah, that's, that's right because it's never existed. Ridiculous! It's, shut it's the fuck. Like shut the fuck movie. up with those agendas, please. Yeah, uh, it's the same thing. Uh, oh God, sorry. We we always go into that circle eventually. There's no strong. There's no strong black superheroes or anything bullshit no it's uh, yeah, all this stuff they, has existed for decades everybody has to exist in the moment and be a part of this moment oh man adventure's coming i've got to be a part of this moment because there's never going to be an, anything more epic in my life uh, yeah but you know right now but you know avengers endgame is getting re-released with bonus footage i've got to be there because now I'll, I'll, I'll see some sort of bullshit They're like oh my god like, i've got to see it right now because life can't get any better this will be the biggest moment in my life <laughs> and people are just like that. That's how people look at everything. Now. Yeah. They never stop to look yeah. at history of entertainment. You know, yeah. People are like Michael Cole going into the headset. Oh, what a moment! I swear to God, I've never seen this before in my life. You know, yeah, yeah. yeah it's already happened like twenty eight yeah. times. <laughs> Yeah, everyone, everyone has the mindset of Michael Cole, which you know I hate Michael Cole with a passion. So I hate therefore I hate all of you. you know? <laughs> Because that's how people are about this yeah. stuff. These people yeah. who just, and most of them are just the millennial assholes who just go out to <laughs> act like, hey, look, hey, I'm supporting this cause. Now I'm supporting this cause. You know, and that's why everyone thought Wonder Woman was so groundbreaking. Like, you yeah. idiots. It's just the fish out of water story done over and over again with a female star. 
which has been done before with a female star, probably. Like, just anyway, that's our uh, explosive. But just never mind that, you know, do. great female heroes and great heroes of ethnicity were featured prominently in G.I. Joe, like Roadblock and Quick Kick both get prominent roles in this show. Hell, there's one episode where Quick Kick is the star of the episode. He but loves Tyler, to watch movies. But Tyler, this happened in 1987, okay? Yeah, what the hell do I I'm just, I, I'm just you know, a 35 year old who's stuck in the past. Like, doesn't sound so right, but I am 35 years old and I'm stuck in the past because things were better back then. Not because I grew up on all of it, <laughs> but I go back at some stuff I never saw as a kid or as a teenager. Like, God, this is great. No wonder this still resonates with people today. But everyone today is all about in the moment, it's all about the current moment. That way I can say, I was there when Avengers Endgame came out. People want to, kids from Generation, I want to know, what was it like when you saw Avengers Endgame? I don't know. I was waiting for Black Panther 2 to come out. And when that came out, I was waiting for Captain Marvel 2 to come out. Oh, uh, yeah. Too. Yeah, here we go. I, I remember seeing that as a kid. I was like, ah! Like, no way! We get to see it! And seeing all those gears in this mask too, like you know, all those like little computer chips and things like that. It's just like, Wait, so much great detail. Uh, what, uh, this is what a lot of fans had a problem with right like just actually seeing him like this is like oh that's it like he i didn't well because he's being mutated so therefore you yeah. don't you weren't gonna know anyway but to their credit when the deke series started they pick up right where this left off like baroness naga high and the force of the cobra get cobra commander back and restore him back to his former self and he's wearing the metallic the metal uh outfit the third version of cobra commander that came out in 87, which I thought, all right, that's really cool that they, they, they kept that kind of continuity. <laughs> that's one hell of a breakfast there. Yeah. But uh, I can appreciate their, their demeanor. Like, you know, we're going to work out, we're going to you know kick ass and run you to death. Like, it was an extremely, like, imposing, like, of what you're seeing and, and hearing them say as a kid, but, you know, as an adult who loves to work out, like, I think all of it's great. <laughs> I'm too lazy to work out. I used to back in the day. I would go down to the basement because dad had stuff down there. And, you know, I would spend the summers like working out, especially when I was doing the <laughs> backyard wrestling shit. I would go down there. It's coming uh, back, man. I'm telling you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I would, uh, I would work out. It, but even then, when I was working out, I, I, I didn't enjoy it. I, it just seemed like work to me, like too much. That's why so. you, you, need, you need to find like the right goal to attach, attach to it, though. That's probably why you didn't enjoy it as much, because you weren't like striving for anything with it, you know? I can picture you like laying and buff or even having some uh, some some mass on. Like that's easy to picture with you. I mean, all the, you have nothing to do but go up. Like you don't have to like lose the weight and then build it up in muscle. Like you're already, you know, you know, you're not carrying excessive amounts of overweight. Like you can just build right up from there, dude. I'm telling you. Like I always picture you can picture you looking like a Bruce Lee build. You know, but you're like, huh, I'd rather I'd rather just go play Tekken or something like that. Go play Tekken. That's really random. Well, I haven't played like, Tekken in forever. Yeah. Yoshimitsu all the way. Uh, you are wrong. Oh top guy. I don't care what my brother says, I can still beat his ass. And th this is another great sequence here. Like this, this is like something you can see in a movie too. The renegade sneaking in the terradrome. I love it. like in this stinking swamp, even big bad cobras in air conditioning. <laughs> like I want to play Mercer in a GI Joe movie. That's our ticket in. So cool. It's a great action sequence. Oh man, it'd be Jason Statham. Mm. Oh, they, no, no, they, they put a wig on him. Uh, say Stan would never wear a wig in a movie. <laughs> You'll know that. He, he could play Taurus, the Russian there. He's bald. There you go. I like this music. Yeah. As, as they're going to central <laughs> control <laughs> here. Stride off hypos. They're so cool. And they're the, the pilots of the Night Ravens. I mean, they look, they look badass too. That's one thing about all of Cobra's various infantry troops. Like the Strata Vipers here, the Crimson and Guards behind them, they all look so distinct and badass. Look at these pilots. I mean, these look amazing in their visual. I mean, just all, all of them look like they could kick your ass. And then you see Mercer, like, I never heard of it. And it's like, so cool. You kick all their asses.
it's just great that they they make sure to give a great a good legit sequence to these new Joes and establish them as like these guys just broke into the Terradrome and blew it up and then left. <laughs> That's how badass these guys are. Cobra yeah, I mean, you got to be pretty badass too to like punch someone with a helmet on and not break your hand. Yeah. They always had good punches. <laughs> I love saying like this Viper Circle be sitting there playing cards. Like I like saying they flip over the table. Now we got a big, you know, gunfight going on. Yeah. <laughs> this has got kick ass movie written all over it. Where's the funny stuff? Yeah. And that that was also a cool little shot where it says intruder like yeah. going across his oh, mouth. Yeah, all the yeah, televipers, nice. they always have like info going across their mouth. Yeah. There. It's like a, a little gimmick that you That's gotta be sort there. of distracting though. And I think it's strictly a novelty for like you know the audience to see. I mean, that, I mean that's uh, to make logic of it. But uh, as a lot of things were on the show, there we can see Falcon do some ass kicking here. Bare hands. Get goosebumps like I can't I'm just watching it's like it just has goosebumps just watching the sequencer because it's so cool <laughs> damn who, yeah, who cares, cares? Yeah, yeah, yeah just <laughs> exploding everything and I, that's the other thing that I really enjoy about G.I. Joe and like Thundercats they really knew how to animate explosions yeah I mean everything had impact everything did you can see a little bit of blood here on Falcon's face. Don Johnson doing a good job of selling, being you know smacked around. I like that, like that demeanor. Like he's just willing, to, like I'm going to wait it out. We're going to blow this place up. I mean, you're going down with me. Seeing Destro with Baron just standing there, just looking to yeah answer Nemesis and Forcer. Cobra bats, they're cool too. Yeah, here we go. This is just like one of those fights, like you just like, oh my god, they're really gonna go, they're really gonna do this. And if and if any of you have seen shoot interviews or anything like that with Sergeant Slaughter, like that voice is not a gimmick. Like he he sounds like that anyway when he talks. Yeah. <laughs> and he is imposing to meet in person too. He was a uh... he's a big dude. He is a big dude. Actually. You got your VHS signed by him. Mm -hmm. I had like this kick ass 11 by 17 print. It's got Sergeant Slaughter and he's got Hulk Hogan in a headlock on one side and Cobra Commander in a headlock. Yeah, that was a genius idea, too. Yeah. Just so what? Uh, like the explosions, I, uh, so well animated. Yeah. I mean, all the details they put in here, the ripples in the water, is it and the, the big the waves exploding? I mean, it's so beautifully animated. God. And look at all this, like, lazy, uninspired, insipid CGI bullshit that unless yeah. Pixar's doing, it just looks lazy and unenthusiastic. Yeah, and, I, and I, I, honestly, I feel like Pixar is the only company that still has a way to actually make you feel something when you're <laughs> when you're watching it. I mean, and too, like, it's all, like, CGI, but I kind of feel like everyone's trying to copy Pixar, yeah. you know, and I just, um, it's, but it's I, just... I, I miss hand-drawn animation. I do. I, I appreciate this stuff so much more than anything done in, in CGI animation, because you, when, you, when you appreciate these shows, you want to know more about them, and you realize all the care and attention that had to go into drawing and animating, and what it took to actually bring a 22-minute episode of any of the beloved favorites. How much hard work had to go into make one episode? You have an even greater appreciation for the final product, especially for episodes you genuinely love, because you realize not only is it a great episode, but people went through a lot of trouble. Granted, they're doing it for a paycheck, but there was a lot of attention and care brought in, and you can clearly tell at times it was more than just a paycheck, because they wanted to make sure these characters good or evil were seen and you bought into it and they left an impression on you, even though it, a lot of it was meant to buy toys, 
but we're still revisiting these cartoons, not just because of the toys, but because the cartoons were so damn memorable. I should be doing a documentary on this stuff. <laughs> well, what, what, like how so? What do you mean? Exactly? I don't know. Just like it, it, being the narrator, talking over everything. Or just, it, just well, not not that because I don't think I have a voice for a narration or anything like that. But just you know, it ain't about just because we grew up with it. You know, nostalgia has a part of it. But I, I just I feel like people miss the point with a lot of this stuff. They're so quick to not actually stop. There's sci-fi there. I was always a cool looking character. Um. But there's just so much going on in these shows, so many great characters and, and great stories that I feel like a lot of times they tend to get overlooked. And there's more to it than just, oh, we grew up on it, so therefore I only like that. Or, oh, that's the only reason I want to collect it. Like, no, 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 there's so much more to it. you know. And that's the point I always try to get across when we do this commentaries and why I do the He-Man podcast, too. Like, there's, there's so much more there. There's so many creative ideas. And I know... It was like Robbie London said, like it wasn't a big deal to him. He was just writing a simple story, but it impacted us so much more. Um, I mean, I, I could spend many, many days thanking all the people who worked on these shows because they've, they've just provided so much entertainment to this day. Well, I, I mean, it's cool enough that you've actually we've actually been able to speak to yeah. people that have been involved in multiple properties that we love and cherish. Yeah. And I mean, it is funny to think about like, yeah, they're wanting to do a good job, but they weren't looking at it in the same way to them. Like, yeah, it was a job, but they did enjoy doing it for the most part. I would assume I'm sure there were some things because uh, that Robbie London worked on that he he didn't really like, which was As funny. I'm sure a lot of people who've worked in animation and comics and toys, you know, you're doing it so you can keep the, the money rolling in. You know, it helps if you do genuinely like the property you're working on. Car, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> I kind of wonder too because, uh, it, oh geez. You get some fan films from you know people that enjoyed horror movies. Maybe we can start to see more of a resurgence of people around our age that become involved. Well, we've kind of seen it with with He Man, you know, with with James, yeah, being involved with the property like uh, uh, Danielle, Val, and others that grew up watching it and loving it, and now are sort of intertwined with it, and it's it's new continuations uh maybe we can kind of get more i don't know i bring back well, and i animation. feel like a lot a lot of times too like that's the intention but then you got some asshole in charge who decides oh well you know what i want to i want to go this way with it but that's not what you hired me for yeah well all right i went and saw this latest medea movie and i want i want to have that in my in my new gi joe film yeah you know or something so like it's that. like man bun from thundercats roar all over again yeah so the person who's in charge who wanted to make like something legit gets the blame for some something that some nameless asshole decides to you know no 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 put it in there damn it um which is that's not always the case of course and sometimes they hire someone who has no business writing for any of these properties but i mean like when the G, uh, when the gi joe comics came out back out i mean there were some really good stories and beautiful kick-ass artwork that made you feel like okay these guys not only they grew up on gi joe but they, they want to continue to carry on that same tone and, and, and seriousness. And that, you know, this is all about being badass and stuff, you know, just it's like Cobra Kai. It's all about being badass. They get it. Yeah. And uh, that they found a good way to balance like older. That, that's actually a good way to look at it with uh, Johnny and Daniel. They have their mentality still sort of from that time that they were kids and, they have that stark contrast with how kids are today now mm -hmm. and finding that, that balance. We need more of that. We need more shows like that. Yeah. Anyway, I, if anything that anyone can take out of this movie, at least have the appreciation too that. Yes. It's dialogue heavy. Yes. There's a lot going on, but they also find a way to have action set pieces, like almost like every 10, 15 minutes, but it all still works. It's not yeah. like too excessive or anything either. And, and look at the imagery here with Duke and Serpentor and Falcon like fighting amongst the fight. And he's getting ready to unveil, you know. Right, well, scum. No. 
right in the heart. Like they're they're I mean, and the music I, stopped. Yes. Yeah, yeah, that that's the look very on effective. Duke's face, the blood, like it, I mean, and look, it is official. It's been said by the powers that he is dead when this happens. All right, dead, and he's not coming back. But because of the whole infamous Optimus Prime fiasco, they throw in at the last minute in this film that, hey, Dukes, come out of the coma. Oh, and they make a point during this thing that he goes into a coma when Scarlet says it. Like, I, I, I give them all the credit in the world that they were willing to kill Duke to make it feel like, okay, people can die in war. Like, that's the purpose. Like, these guys are here to stop terrorism and evil on, on the planet, you know, in a more Earth, Earth based way. Uh, scenario and that people do die. There are casualties of war, and I think it, 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 they should have stuck with it. And I get why they changed it, but I think it's important that you know had this made it through. Like it wasn't the it wait. wouldn't have been the first film in a children's film. Wait, wait, wait. First time, what, wait, what? didn't that that it, it impaled him on his left side? But now they're showing Animation, the wound on the yeah, right yeah. side. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now oh, it's yeah all okay, all right, yeah, yeah. yeah. I wonder how that one slipped through. And Michael Bell, the voice of uh, Duke, and Angelica's father, he just died. And that's how Michael Bell talks, too. Like, he's not altering his voice. Though. That's how Michael Bell actually talks. And this is great, too. Like, if, if Duke had actually, actually died, like, it really would have made... I mean, it's, it's great. It's beautifully animated. Falcon's crying, Scarlet's crying, and, and Hawk's going to shed a tear here. It's a great moment. And you Optimus Prime fans took it away from us. Because <laughs> you had to cry, make your parents write those damn letters, and get took it away from me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I'll, I'll, uh, this was kind of brought up in the chat, too. Do you think, had this come out first, and they went through with him dying, and then came out with the Transformers movie, you think Optimus Prime would have lived? Would it have had the same effect, do I you think, think? I think Duke would have died. Because I like it's clearly stated that Duke is not the he's a popular character, yes, but he's not the uh, this on the same level as Optimus Prime. Do you think it? Well, I was going to say, do you think that that would have had the same rippling effect, or do you think that this would have come out? Duke would have died. Duke Transformers would have come out. Optimus still would have died. Yeah, Optimus okay. still would have died, but they would have went through with it and thought that well, we we killed off Duke. Kids probably, you know. You know, I, I really just don't think kids would have had the same impact on Duke dying because Snake Eyes was so popular. You had so many, like, on, on like, I mean, powerful ca characters on among the GI Joe ranks. Like Optimus is the definitive leader. Like GI Joe, you had so many characters. Like, like I said, for me, I, I saw Flint and Duke as equals. I just, I just, I have a hard time picturing Duke having that kind of impact on kids. Had they killed them all? So if Duke, if this came out first and Duke died. I'm sure they probably still would have killed off Optimus because they obviously the impact I don't think would have been there as as stress. I could be wrong, but I just don't see that being the same way or same thing happening if if Duke had died first. If this movie come out and they kill him off, because um, like I said, some of the episodes you see Duke being the leader in certain episodes, and then Flint is leading the, the Joes in certain episodes. So kind of a back and forth. And this is just a, a, an interesting sequence here, too. Like I said, there's so much going on here, like Roadblock and Cobra Commander, like Cobra Commander losing his mind, and a giant snake fighting. I mean, yeah, it's... There's Iceberg, and Lifeline, Flint. That was a nice touch, too, having, like, the, the snow, like, on his... Yeah, on his, on his eyebrows his, and his yeah, mustache. Yeah. yeah, like, he's yeah. really like, getting, like, covered in ice, almost. Kind of like in Dumb and Dumber when they had the frozen snot in their face. <laughs> We're there. Just go, man. Oh, it's really warm. <laughs> <laughs> here, here, have mine. Oh, it's like he had an extra pair of gloves the whole time. We're in the Rockies. <laughs> There's Stalker. It's a shame we don't get to see much of him in general in G.I. Joe, except in the very, very beginning you can see some Stalker, but Carl Weathers, he'd have been an awesome stalker. See, a G.I. Joe live action in the 80s would have been, I mean, like, having Carl Weathers play stalker, Sylvester Stallone plays Flint. Um, 
I mean, there's so many great things they could have done if this was a live action film in the 80s. Could have gotten Sergeant Slaughter in the 80s to play Sergeant Slaughter, dude. That would have been awesome. I think today, too, they should make a G.I. Joe movie that takes place in the 80s. You know, that way you really could justify having the classic designs of like, well, that's 80s, man. They would dress all in black in today's movies. You know, that, that's, that's what it's about. It's all dressed in black. No individuality. Nothing, no, nothing about, you know, being unique. You've got to wear solid black, man. It's all about being, you know, like everybody else. No individuality, which is what one of the cool things about G.I. Joe was. So many distinct heroes. Like, look at this roster already. They're all distinct in their visual look. I I I I I can think of him just off to himself. I was once a man. <laughs> and my brother had the tomahawk here, this this um helicopter here, which uh, a couple of his buddies from elementary school, like their big brother was really big in the G.I. Joe and he apparently had moved out and they just gave it to him. So my brother comes home with a tomahawk missing a lot of pieces, but it was oh my god, like the and it still had like a lot of the chairs and the machine guns were still attached to it, so it was a blast to play with that thing as a kid. But it was always in. cool just getting like the the hand me downs. Oh it, yeah, it was awesome. Oh, you don't want that anymore? Yeah, I'll take it. Oh yeah, because you know that's one of the good things about our our time. We were coming along when the kids that were really around when this stuff was really prominent were growing out of it, and like oh, I don't want it anymore. I'll take it. Yep, you dumbass. That yeah, that happened a lot with uh, my. My mom's, my mom's uncle, like his kids got old and just didn't have any use for toys. So anytime we went over there, it's like, here, take this. Okay. Yeah, I was all about that too. Didn't happen as much as I would like, but uh, it did happen some. And the rest of it, I was just saying that I have to go pick up at, you know, flea markets or hope that uh, somebody didn't wonder anymore, like in school, because uh, a lot of a lot of the kids in school like weren't into the older stuff, more about the current stuff. So I'd have to trade current toys for the old toys. I, no, I, I never, I never traded toys. Yeah, I did that. I would always regret stuff like that. Well, for the most part, I, my heart was so set on toys of the '80s, even the early '90s, because I, I wanted more He-Man, Silverhawks, Thundercats, GI Joe. Like I, characters that I never owned. Like I, I, my my passion to own this figure is heavily outweighed any of the current. Well, what uh, what's a trade that you made? Hit us up with one of the ones you've done. One. I remember. Um, uh, I remember Jamie Taylor had a steel wheel from Silverhawks, and I forgot what I traded him to get it. And then I remember in fifth grade, Andrew Mason, which I remember he dated your cousin, or for or. Or no. Oh yeah, no, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, when I was in fifth grade, um, I think he had a couple of He-Man figures. So I traded him my Predator Clan leader from the Kenner line to get Snout, Snout Spout and Zodak. Um, and I didn't know Snout Spout's name. I was like, do you have the elephant guys? Like, yeah, yeah. My brother's got that. He don't want it anymore. I'll trade him to you. <laughs> so I ended up getting those. Oh uh, yeah, uh, Sergeant Slaughter with the double clothesline, yeah, double punch, Flint and Lady. Uh, uh, this is a great epic as hell fight too. But that's just one example. I, I, I ended up trading a few other um, uh, current toys to get older toys a couple of times. Uh, but for the most part, um, I remember Patrick Carrico had a bunch of uh, extra He-Man figures that a neighbor of his just gave to him. So I'm over to his house for like the first time hanging out, and he gives me Web Store, Triclops, Trap Jaw, and Manny Faces for free because he already had like two or three of all of them already. And he's like, here, you like them? You can have some because he had doubles of all of them. So I come home with those and an extra road ripper. I'm like, holy shit, man. It was amazing that day. Just like all these creatures coming out of the damn ground. I was going to say, man, like we're getting. Yeah. This is definitely... classic slaughter. Ah, shut up. <laughs> come on. <laughs> Lots of creativity. Yeah, I, to me, it just seems like they're like, all right, let's just go batshit crazy with these insects. Yeah, we can, it's animation; we can do whatever the hell we want. And tunnel rat, like, this like, is what, a great like, what the here. fuck is that thing? You know? Yeah. Ugh. 
doesn't get too far. <laughs> I'll uh, last coming out of it. <laughs> so many great characters. And just, just ass kicking all over the place. Like to see a live action G.I. Joe movie where you've got the humans just taking on a wide variety of like these insectoid creatures. It's like Sectars has invaded uh, G.I. Joe. I mean, it's you think about it from what, you know, I could see why, you know, a lot of G.I. Joe fans just don't like this because it is out of the realm you're, you're typically used to. Even though there's some episodes of G.I. Joe, I'm like, oh my God, man, like, just like with a lot of great cartoons, you've got some, some duds here and there, but some of them, like, oh Lord, but then you got some that are like, God, they kicked ass. And this is a, a far stretch for some. Like, I can see why. And this sequence coming up here, three on three. I love it. I love how both of them, like, they all look down. They're ready to go fight individually. It's so cool. Not this time. Yeah, Slot is rated. He's ready to dish it out this time. <laughs> Hell yeah. And seeing these Python and Jinx take, it, you know, take each other on. Just a classic kung fu fight. Once again, we've reached that point in the show where you and I are just... I'm just like watching, watching the, the movie. fight yeah. here, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that happens a lot. Yeah. I remember the, the 25th anniversary line that was going on back in the, the mid-2000s, and they'd done like a bunch of two-packs, and they had Falcon and Nemesis Enforcer. When I bought them, I'm like, oh, man, this is so cool, because the, the, the new sculpts were even more articulated. They were beautifully done, you know? That's cool, too. Prepare for eternity and that, all that venom oozing out of her fingertips. That's some scary shit, man. I, I really wish Hasbro... I mean, I knew they have that collector's line that you have to like sub up for. And I don't know if it's still going on right now, but those figures look amazing. And they have every single way they've come out. And those are expensive as hell to get to. Like, it's like He-Man classics. Like, you're better off getting an originally complete, you know, big boa than the collector's choice line, which they want like $100 or $200 a piece for. No, thank you. Yeah, I mean, it looks amazing. All of every single character, whether you like them or not, like all the Ninja Force they did, like TJ Bang and Dojo, um, Nunchuck, they all look amazing. And you can get an original Nunchuck, Men on Car for like 40 bucks. You want the, uh, the uh, Collector's Choice line? $200. Unless you sub out for it. Oh, I hate that. But fake characters like that too probably wouldn't sell it well on the shelf today because kids are like, a camouflage ninja? I don't know what that is. You know, give me my Minecraft. <laughs> my, my, my pixelated bullshit toy. Whatever. I, look, I, as I'm a toy enthusiast, you know, and I, I like to think I can understand why certain kids are like that. But figures of the Minecraft, I've never understood that. And the Pokemon stuff, too, like, they don't do anything. Like, action figures should be able to do something. You know, you kind of interact with them a little bit, pose them, and interact punches and kicks and stuff. And your Pokemon is just these, like, you know... <laughs> Yeah, I don't think kids are so much into the Pokemon toys. It's mainly no, nah, but even when the when they were when they were popular, when I was yeah, young, I'm like I don't get it. Like, and I was collecting toys at the time. Like, I don't get why kids have fun playing with something that you can't really. Do yeah, elbow about. drop, body slam. Yeah, again, again. <clears throat> Double axe handle on the ground. You make me sick. <laughs> ah. Some of might say, well, he's got wings. He can fly right out. I took his like He just beat his ass so much that he can even use the muscles in his wings to fly. But Sergeant Slaughter kicked his ass that much, and he got impaled. Also, that's the terrible thing with uh, villains and capes. Yeah. You get it caught in shit. But Serpentor would be back for the Deke series, so he's he's not dead. Just takes him out of action here. And this, this is like, much like when Predator takes his mask off, you think that's his face. Like, holy shit, there's more to him here. And then just breaks out and he's got a snake bar. Like, oh, man. Uh. 
and saying he's going to crack his vertebrae. Just love the menacing dialogue. Like, this is a guy, like, he's going he's gonna to kill you. One by one. And then sticks him in the eye. Oh, it's great. And implied too. Like you yeah. Just, you, like you, you know hear what it, happened. But yeah, you don't see and it. You'll see it here in a moment. Like you see the wound. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> Utterly futile. Behold, the odds have matured. You have lost, G.I. Joe. This makes me think of like Paul and getting all over my car. <laughs> yeah, that's what it looks like. And Galopulus lives, man. Did Don Johnson ever talk about working on this movie at all? Are there any I've never anything? Seen, I've watched like a bunch of like archival interviews with him over the years, and I've never once heard him mention it uh, in anything. But that would be something I feel like he would be glad to talk about because it's not Miami Vice related or Nash Bridges or anything he's currently working on. It's <laughs> old, Na that... old Nash Bridges. Yeah, I I watched that show. Couldn't, uh, I, I couldn't I, help it. My parents I, like watching it. You know, you only got. I mean, I did have a TV in in my room at the time, but I don't know. I guess I it wasn't it. Miami Vice, so therefore I was not interested. But I'd be willing to give it. Another try today. It was fine for what it was. But I'm telling you, man, I get you watching Miami Vice. You're like, man, like, why can't cop dramas be like this today instead of just a bunch of guys standing around? We we uh we know you raped her. We have no evidence, and we're not really cool about you know in, in doing drama or any action sequences. But we know we know you raped her. We're just gonna sit here and interrogate you. We're gonna go interrogate this person. I'm like that's why I like, I like Law and Order. It's just a bunch of like sitting around talking. Like there's no action or anything. Nothing interesting. I just don't. Even though it's realistic, I guess we would say, but it's not entertaining. And I've watched it plenty of times. I'm like, God, it's supposed to be just sleep. I, I think I think most people enjoy it. It's just a, a comfort. You know, everything's pretty much about the same. And you just have it on as white noise. Yeah, I mean, doing my dad, else. my stepdad. I mean, they watch it religiously. I don't mind it. Like if I sat, if I had to sit down and watch it, I would do it. I don't and have I, a problem with it. I watched it several times. I'm like, I don't get it. I don't get why people like. It. And it's been, God, the spinoffs. Like I can't say it's not. It's it's clearly people like it. But I just felt like I don't. I don't get it, man. Oh uh, yeah, there was a little voice bit of. Oh, right, he's gonna be yeah. a okay. Yeah, Doc chiming in just to let the kids know he didn't die. Don't send us any angry letters. Oh. Uh, uh. Heading home, boys. It's a great film. And we're going to close it out with the ass-kicking G.I. Joe theme here. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Love it, man. Just makes you want to go pump some weight, man. Yeah. In alphabetical order. Which is uh, kind of a strange way to do credits in a way. Yeah. With this many people involved. So many people, so many characters. <laughs> All right, uh, let's see. We do. Uh, there was one question I saw in here. Which Joe would you guys want to be, and which lady, either side, would you like to be with? I guess that's going to be the same. We're just going to be asked. What? 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 What, to, like, what character? Do you, what are, yeah. Who? Who do you want to fuck? Uh, I mean, I, it's it's not like a, a month, but I, I I mean, Lady J is awesome. I, she's my favorite. You know, of the Joes. Um, but uh, 
you would think snake eyes, but not being able to talk, you know, as it's, uh, but either snake eyes or flint. Um, I, I just, or Merc oh, Mercer. You know what? I will say Mercer, dude, because everyone's going to say snake eyes. Mercer, dude. Now, that, that, plus, Mercer had blonde hair in the, in the toys, in the, like, the, the toy line, too. So, uh, of course. Yeah. I'm yeah. gonna go. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, unbox this. I already kind of. Hey, said Larry early. Houston, right there, storyboard director. Larry Houston, there. Maybe yeah. Maybe one day we can get him back to talk. Yeah, about he's stuff. doing. He's doing the con circuit all the time, and the guys at a convention all the time signing autographs. I left my box cutter uh, in the kitchen, so I'm just gonna open it this way. get the authentic box opening noises just on the podcast so those of you on itunes and podbean hop on over to the beyond retro youtube channel youtube.com slash beyond retro podcast there you go people support your titties north and step on the gas oh they actually like have it wrapped in like its own shop factory paper man yeah all right, so what we have here, basically, got the poster with it, too, because you, you order it, and it's, uh, oh, and they they give you two slip covers. That's kind of intriguing. You don't even have to reverse it. So we have in classic poster art form, Night of the Creeps. This is the collector's edition Blu-ray that came out. They also give you the slip cover here of the new artwork that they made, which is what the, the poster's of. Which Very that, cool. Which is actually, that's really badass. And... The best part, and the reason that I decided, because I already have the movie on Blu-ray in its original release, uh, it's I almost kind of want to just leave it in its packaging, which I don't do that much anymore. But there we go. We get our own Tom Atkins yeah, that looks action great. figure. Yeah, our own Detective Ray Cameron. It does look good in the package, though. Yeah. This is done by NECA, as you, you guys can see. There but on the bottom. as you well know, we don't buy the new stuff just to keep it in the box, man. You gotta let it breathe. I know. I I probably will. So we, we get a, a pistol, a shotgun, and uh, the cool thing here, he comes with a bottle and a can of beer. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So I can definitely get some other usage out of the the beer bottles with these, like putting them with, I don't know, any other variety of figures I have laying around. So there we go. Give a beer to one of the Ninja Turtles on the shelf there. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Give it to Mikey. Pizza yeah. in one hand, beer in the other. <laughs> but yeah, I I need to see like what all is new in terms of special features on here. But uh, I like this. Uh, between Night of the Creeps and Monster Squad, because Fred Decker worked on both of those. Uh and he also worked on The Predator also, so he loses points in my book for that. Uh, sure. Yeah, yeah. Not, not wrong, not wrong. But I I think if if Tom Atkins is ever at another convention that we're at, I'll get him to sign this poster. Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, the autograph that I do have from him before was just a Night of the Creeps print that he had at his table. That was like a, an odd size and honestly the print quality on that's not as great mm. but uh still cool sweetheart of a man i highly recommend if he's at a convention that you guys are close by to definitely talk to him uh did joe buy a fan yet or will we be seeing more used tissues uh not that i know of but you but... might be seeing something new from him in general yeah the, those of you that I guess our friends with him or follow him on Facebook probably got a bit of a tease of what he's planning to do. But uh, yeah, I think that I think we're going to have be, a new, new look, Joe. And they'll be showing some skin. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, uh, a variant Amato, but it, it's going to help him uh, breathe better and not yeah. get so sweaty. I would imagine. Well, I it's hope just anyway. like he'll, he can't, he's, he can't continue to spend the rest of our podcast and days being uncomfortable because oh my God, my mouth, they'll, they'll see my mouth and, They'll, they'll, they'll want to give me 10 cents so they can see me. And just like, you know, thinks to himself like a size of circus freak. Like, thanks, you know, Nathan's wearing, step right up here, people. Only for a nickel, you can see this guy's mouth. You wouldn't believe what you see here. Like, Joe. I would, I would do that. I would do that. I oh, know, just to poke fun, you yeah. know. But, <sighs> uh, no, Joe is finally like, 
breaking through and a little bit a little bit a little bit yeah we'll see how that turns out for him but uh i guess if you guys got any more questions you want to throw away real quick before we wrap this up uh tyler uh any final thoughts and i guess uh <clears throat> should we give us a star rating for this i mean i love the gi joe movie i mean i i i love it as a whole um it's beautifully animated and uh and very entertaining like yeah. if anything you can't say that it's boring because it's no, definitely not no. boring. i give it a five because you know hands down five stars it's you know you're like five stars for the gi joe i'm like yeah because it gives you what you want they, they push the boundaries of the maturity level in this even though you got giant insects running all over the place but the content between the joes and cobra i mean it's it's it's, it's on a fairly mature level so no i i give it five stars man it's it's a kick-ass film five stars he's badass five stars for me as well there's just uh, a lot to appreciate even if the insects do throw you off uh, the animation is beautiful uh, yeah the, the dialogue is appropriate and as we said before like a, adult there's definitely some big words being thrown around for something that's aimed at kids at the time that it came out so uh yeah, there's not that for me. There's no negative to it. Uh, it could be different, I guess, to us just because when we watched it, our age, and we're just like, yeah, whatever. We went with the flow. Yeah, older fans probably do have some discrepancies with it, but uh, yeah, awesome. And just the cover art too for this is is mm -hmm. badass. I, 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 I wish really I wish like more had been included more characters would have been included well, on see, it. That's, that's why I, I would love, like, that's why I still want to get the, the first VHS release, which I was talking about, or I think you had stepped away, which has got that cover. And then on the back, it has like this gallery of assorted characters that are featured in like new ones and uh, some of the current roster. And that's what threw me off as a kid. There were so many characters I didn't recognize. I'm like, I don't know if I'll be able to enjoy this, man, because there's characters in here. I don't know who they are. And that was the whole point of it. But, I was thrown off by it, but uh, if you get a chance to, and uh, it's not the clamshell, it's just like the standard, like, yeah. you know, VHS box, and um, I forgot where I put it. Oh, it's right over there. Um, but, uh, yeah, the whole, I, I would love to have a poster of that VHS box, because you got Serpentor on one side, Galopulus on the other, and the assortment of characters in the back, and the beautiful painting, and it's 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 an amazing um piece of art. I like it better than the Transformers movie uh, uh, VHS because, you know, I've come to appreciate that a lot more, but I, like as, as, all, as I've said like like with this one, there's characters on there, I'm like, I don't recognize any of these people. Where's Optimus Prime? Where's Megatron? Like, you know, like, it's Ultra Magnus and Cup and I, I can't remember who else is on there too. I've got that I think on the shelf over here too. Yeah, it's right there. But um, I appreciate it more now, but I'd love to have a 27 by 40 poster of the G.I. Joe movie. That would be awesome to have. Maybe, and maybe, maybe we'll one day. One day and Don Johnson will do the con circuit. And I can get an autograph something Miami Vice related and something G.I. Joe related. You know? That's why I, I remember throwing that out to a Mad Monster. Said, why can't you guys get Philip Michael Thomas and Don Johnson? Like, you know, they've gotten Bo Duke from Dukes of Hazard and various other people from TV shows. And Raleigh Con's getting people from various things like Bring back Miami Vice, man. Come but, on. Do, but does Don Johnson do he conventions? Still, I don't think so. I've never known him to do conventions. That's why I'm like, you know, you see people that I don't know if they do conventions. Like John Cusack was coming to Raleigh and Anthony yeah. Michael Hall. And I mean, maybe they have done some cons, but you just don't know them as names who do the con circuit. So I'm like, come on, man. Don Johnson and Philip Michael Thomas. That'd be awesome. I mean, it would be. They'd probably charge out the ass for it. I'd gladly pay, you know. I know you would. Oh, I yeah, know you for, would. Yeah, just to have a and to do a photo op with like a Miami Vice background with the two of them. Oh man, yeah, without question. <laughs> Here's my money. I'm not questioning a damn thing. Yeah, you can just skip out on rent for the month. Doesn't matter. Uh, I would. They can kick me out. I'll be homeless. It'll yeah, be fine. But I've, I've got my eight by ten of me in the cast of Miami Vice, though. Right. I'm like I'm like uh, Steve Martin walking around in the bathroom. I don't need anything except my eight by ten photo of me in the Miami Vice crest. Oh, I need this and just walk around with my pants around my ankles, just saying what I need and what I don't need. Yanish was in the chat saying, "Time to make something." I think 
he's thinking photoshops and uh by the way buddy happy birthday today's his birthday oh yeah happy birthday there dude uh yeah i guess we should just go ahead and wrap this up gone yeah. gone yeah. on long enough on this one yeah gave you a little more with an unboxing yeah which we... which doesn't happen too often on these shows i thought about maybe more like just either recording videos or live streaming when i get shit in the mail and just be like oh okay well let's uh let's just ah that's everything ah there we go just be like oh let's unbox this all oh, who do we have we have the riddler from oh, batman yeah. anime yeah yeah i gotta i'll take him out get him so yeah make sure he's not sitting the floor two weeks from now dude i i don't want to hear it hey no the all i got is mikey left those guys are out you've seen the pictures i sent yeah. them to you I kind of got in this space when the, everything build, started rolling in. Don't rebuild the stack is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see how it goes, but I've actually been kind of motivated. The shit comes in. I'm like, yeah, all right, let's take it out get it on the shelf, like immediately. Like, I will go out on the porch, grab the box, come in, crack it open, crack it open, display it somewhere. All right. So maybe maybe it'll continue. I won't get lazy with it anymore. I've done that way with movies. Like, I have movies that... I've gotten since we moved in here, which was almost, yeah, almost two years ago now. And I haven't like worked them into the collection. You remember how I used to be? I would get movies and be like, all right, I gotta, I gotta work it into the collection. I gotta like shift everything over. Cause I, for those of you that probably don't know my DVD Blu-ray collections, I'm probably like 14, 1500 movies, but they're all alphabetized and they're also by genre as well. And some people are like, are you serious? I'm like, yeah, because it makes it easier to find things. Mm -hmm. Like if in my head, I'm like, oh, well, I want to watch. Uh, shit, I don't know. Let's say Enter the Dragon. Then I'll, I'll definitely go to like my action section. E. It, it's just easier to pick it out. Most people just have their movies randomized on the shelf and have to like look for it and find it. Me, I know exactly where I need to go. Boom, done. It's just easier. Well, I think anybody who has a, a, a large collection of Blu-rays and DVDs, you like, have to. They're they're going to be the type that if you're in, into movies that much, you're going to categorize it and alphabetize it. Like it's just that's just kind of comes to the territory of. It's kind of I'd be hard pressed to find someone who. You know who just threw the shit on the shelf, but loved 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 movies, someone who quotes movies, someone who buys like multiple versions for the special features, and they just throw uh... the stuff on the shelf. I just. Yeah, I, I'm kind of glad I'm past that point of wanting to. I mean, obviously this was an exception because I'm doing it to get this this yeah. figure as part of the bundle because that's the only way it was available. But I'm glad I'm past the point of like not double dipping on things. Or well, if the, I'm well, if I'm going to now, it's going to be an upgrade from DVD to Blu-ray or or it better be 4K with, or whatever. You know, something that has like a lot of like a, like. I think Shop Factor's doing like a Vampires Collector's yep, Edition. They are. Which I'm like, of that, I will get. Even though Nathan bought me that kick ass Blu ray, this has got like. Well, I, but that made sense because it, it had just been released yeah. to, like, that's the only version of it on Blu ray, and all we had were the DVDs. Yeah. I mean, uh, to me, if you're upgrading for picture quality, that's one thing. But if it's just like we used to with DVDs, it's like, oh, well, it's got a new bonus feature on. We got to get it. It's like, well, I mean, and I. It depends on what get, it is, too. I well, guess. they get they get they really get cheap on bonus features because everyone's all these companies are notorious for just recycling the same stuff that's released on the collector's edition DVD. Put that over here. Nothing else. Charge thirty dollars with yeah. a new slightly new cover. And I, no, nah, you ain't get my money with that. I don't steal book. I don't care. You know, three D graphics. I'm not falling for that shit anymore. Yeah. So. Yeah. Same here. Like if if I don't own it yet, and there's a steel book, and it looks cool. Then yeah, I'll, I'll get it. But nah. uh, Fedmon did kind of bring up a good point. Uh, you should not open stuff immediately from the mail. Give it an hour to get room temperature. Or stuff might break. That that's actually yeah. Because if it is like a hot ass day and it sat out there and got warm, or a cold day, you yeah. do run. Yeah, you definitely do run that risk. Or you know if it's like some of the stuff that uh, Neca makes, it's just fragile and it's gonna break anyway. <laughs> yeah, no matter what you do. So. Yeah. Yeah, God. Yeah, that's the shredder. <clears throat> I'll go ahead and show you guys. Uh, from the 1990 movie, there he is, like, boom, right here to just watch me and intimidate me the whole time. But he actually, I had him displayed higher 
on the, the, the glass cases. Uh, let's see the camera work that are right there beside of me too. And he, he fell over and like two pieces right here, like broke off. But luckily those just slide and snap right back in. But I was like, ah, God damn it. No <laughs> shit. <laughs> uh, it's, it's it's scared. It's scared <laughs> to make this story actually funnier. If you guys are familiar, this door right here is the bathroom. So he's sitting up on the shelf. I'm sitting over there, door open, like taking a shit. And I, I just, <laughs> I look up and I see it, ha <laughs> see it happening. I'm like, gets up, pants oh no, it falls down on the floor. And I didn't fall on the floor, but I did get up with like my pants down. I was like, God damn it, no! <laughs> like trying to, <laughs> you know, like I'm gonna uh, catch it. No. no. Yeah. Yeah. Balls and everything. Are just... Yeah. Oh, and yeah. everybody's like, huh, 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 huh. Just like laughing. <laughs> no, she wasn't here. She had already left to go uh -huh. to work. Well, that's like the only time I ever take a shit in that bathroom is when like, oh, okay. she's, she'd be, she's, she's not been here. asleep during all that anyway. Yeah, probably. The camera had to pander, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Shredder looks like he's seen some scary shit. What unspeakable things have you done in front of him? Nothing. He is intimidating though, man. Like he just like he's he's staring at me right now. Telling you to find her, silence her. Yeah. Thought I was gonna sneeze for a second. I think it went away. All right. We should go ahead and wrap this up. We uh, hope we hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, like the video, leave a comment down below. Let us know your thoughts on G.I. Joe the movie. If uh, you were kind of one of those fans that checked it out and you're like, oh, all the bugs and shit, I, I don't care for it. Let us know what you thought and uh, let us know what you think of us because Tyler always has to have that gratification. It's, yeah, it's just, yeah, yeah. It's, it, you know, I need you people to play on my ego here. You know what I'm, uh, you know what I'm saying? We don't need any more of that. Anyway, we hope you guys enjoyed. If you're new to the <laughs> channel, hit that subscribe button, like the video. Ring the bell so you get notified when we go live for Capes and Commentaries Beyond Retro Podcast whenever we get around to do another one of those again, or when I pop up randomly to play some old video games. Check out the links down below. You can download us on iTunes and Podbean. Probably some other places, too, I imagine. Doug says we have reach in other podcast avenues. I don't know. Buy Joe's t-shirts. Hit him up for a custom. And check out Fans of Power, the He-Man, the Master Universe podcast, hosted by Tyler Baker, Joe Amato, and myself. That's every Sunday at 9 p.m. Eastern. Tyler, you got anything else? Let's call it a day. That's all I got to say. Hey, there's a roadblock. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there I, we, yeah, I, I there we go. It's perfect. It. It did, it's perfect. It, yeah, yeah. Had, that was not intended. I just, it rolled off like that. So that's a great capper. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Look how proud he is of himself. Yeah, anyway. Man, that's perfect. God, I'm good. Until then, we will see you in the future to talk about the past. Take care, everybody. Yo, Joe. <laughs>